You guys are one of the best teams, obviously one of the best teams of that era. But I do want to know your side of of the Miami San Antonio rivalry, right? Because we know this Miami side that's well documented. They did have respect for you guys, but again, they didn't have the cocoon you guys had. What was it like playing up against them and playing against LeBron? Because you were a guy that guarded LeBron and did a good job. He did a good job on LeBron. And and did a good job. I learned everything from Raja. (laughs) <laughs> yes. What was it like? Um, what was it like that first uh, series against them in 2012, 2013? What was that like? And then uh, we'll, we'll go on from there. What was what was that first series like when you're playing against I mean, them? It was great. It was a great battle. You know, uh, it was playing like, uh, you know, two style of basketball clashing pretty much, you know, mm-hmm. the way they were playing, like you say, all the hype and, and, and uh, you know, the, the quality of the players individually you know, was way better than our team, you know, yeah. uh, but the way we were playing together uh, and, and the team playing uh, was matching with what they were doing. And so it was, it was just, you know, very interesting. It was, it was, it was a great time. Uh, we were like only a few seconds from winning that first championship in the 2013, you know, from Ray Allen shots. Um, yeah. Ray Allen shot. What Ray Allen shot? What, what the fuck? Cause that series was a series where both of you guys are just blowing each other out in the last two games. Yeah. It was really, really close. What yeah. would you think you had it in the bag game six? What was, what was that like? Tell me about that. Everybody thought we had it, you know, we thought we had it. <laughs> Even even Miami thought we had it. <laughs> yeah. So I um, mean, yeah. Were you thinking about Ray, I'm about to go Ray. turn up in Miami right in like about yeah. two hours? I'm about to lit, get lit. No, I mean we don't think about that. I mean you always, yeah, you you keep everything inside. But uh, we know we were, you know, getting close uh, to to um, to close the the, the series. Uh, but yeah, you know, one offensive rebound. You know, if we get the offensive rebound, the game is over, and then they get it and hit it in the last second. So um, I mean, it was it was hard and it was tough, uh, but yeah, one bad bounce makes you lose the game at that time, but also we could have won the game, you know, plays before like 10 plays before that by just, you know, playing a different way. And so that fueled us for the next season after that. Uh, One of the things that I liked about your team is you guys would, you guys are always focused, but afterwards you guys kind of always seem to keep things in perspective. I remember when you guys lost against the Clippers the first round, right? That's a, was it, it was a fucked up loss to have, but you guys, you guys are like, you guys have a team function where you guys are chilling on Hollywood Boulevard, right? It's, it's, you guys are keeping things in perspective. How did you guys do that after you guys lose in Miami? Cause you're still in Miami and you lose at, yeah. at the way you guys lost. What, what was it like right after that, that game? What did you guys do? How was the vibe? What was going uh, on? Well, like we always do, um, you know, pop say, you know, win or lose men's got to eat. So we went to a restaurant <laughs> Uh, and so we had like a team dinner where pretty much every player, you know, had to come, uh, even after losing, because, you know, when you lose, obviously you don't want to see anybody and stuff like that, but you know, just to be able to overcome that, uh, and, and get on the right track already, you know, for the next season. Um, and then to celebrate also a good season, you know, you lose that last game. It doesn't erase everything you did in that whole season. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we all went, we all had dinner. Um, I remember the name of the Italian restaurant, uh, at the end by the water in, uh, in Miami by the Epic. Um, so we, anyway, yep. we went there, we all had dinner over there. Was it good? Um, was it great? Was it a great meal? Yeah. Well, well it was great food, but obviously, I yeah. mean, everybody was kind of down and stuff like that and cheering each other up and like, you know, uh, you know, it's sport and it's cruel and things happen, but uh, you know, life still goes on and, uh, uh, we'll get another chance, you know, pretty much that's, that's the, the spirit. And so that's why we did the next season. How focused were you guys going into that next season? Cause you guys go in and you guys, and you guys beat the Miami Heat in five. That's why the focus for the whole season the next year was nuts. And, uh, and it started like, uh, from uh, a training camp and training camp pop showed us that game six where rail and make the last shot. And so we saw the, I don't even know if we saw the last shot, but we saw the whole second half. And so, uh, and, and pop emphasis, uh, put the emphasis on, uh, uh, pay attention to details and all the details, like, yeah, one shot beat us, but like I was saying earlier, all the mistakes that we did during that, that, that second, uh, uh, half, um, could have been avoided 
Uh, it was a lot of stupid mistakes. It was a lot of details that wasn't done, you know, not setting a screen properly, not boxing out, uh, you know, even if it's 10 minutes to the end of the game. Um, if we'd done that at that time and all these little details, we would have won the game. And so uh, we used that to fuel, the, we used that game to fuel the whole season. The whole season we're thinking about this game. And so yeah. going into the, the finals, the same, yeah. So the mantra that season was pay attention to details. Yes. Wow. They were the most, Raja, they were the most fucking in tune, locked in team I've ever seen. You guys systematically beat them every single game other than one. I did have a question though. How fucking hot was it that first game when LeBron got cramps? How fucking hot was it in that arena, bro? Oh, when it was hot? Yes. Yeah, it was hot. <laughs> but, <laughs> Bro, San Antonio uh, was so sick. You guys had fucking bats in the in the arena. You guys were yeah. sneaky sick in that in that no, fucking arena. No, oh, no, fuck no. that, fuck that, uh, Bobo. One you guys time, were somebody sick. told me they had a snake in a locker somewhere. <laughs> what the fuck? It was a snake in a in a visiting locker, and then there was like, oh shit. The Boston like Garden always it. has lore of like having <laughs> shit no. done to other teams. You, you San Antonio, we don't motherfucker. Do that. No, fuck no that it here. was hot. It was hot for everybody. <laughs> Uh, but for sure, like to me, it was hot, but we used to play in hot and no AC because it was no arena, not even one in France that have AC. And so we're playing in the yeah. summertime. It's just super hot because sure. it's summer and it's like 90 degrees and you play in an arena where it's 90. And so we just used to. So it was obviously not comfortable, but it was not that bad for us. But yeah, you got to drink some water, man, so you don't get no cramps. Got to hydrate, bro. That arena's out hydrate. in the sticks, too. It's out on, like, the oh, rodeo yeah. grounds. It's, like, it's out there. Yep. It's in Antonio. How the fuck did you guard LeBron, man? Like, what? how did you do that? You did I a great mean, job I, on him. I didn't do it on my own, first of all. Like, it was you more like, film you know, of Raja Bell and team then, effort. Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking of clothesline, but I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like that was that, I was like that would be the last resort. <laughs> if it really yeah. is going off. Uh, if, hey, if you would have took that Red Bull, you might have done it. If you would have exactly. took the coffee with the Red Bull, you might have done it. I didn't have, I didn't have it in me. I didn't have it in me. Um no, but at the time it was different, you know, uh, and people were asking me that also because I was watching the the last finals and it was still going off and it was amazing in those finals. Uh but I'm like He's better now than he was back then. I don't think I could have guarded him the same way now. How did you try uh, to guard him? That he was back then. Because back then, his, his shot was not as reliable as it is now. Mm-hmm. So uh, pretty much, it was like pick your poison. And I was a, a, a taller and, and big. And so that's why um, you know I could guard him closer to the basket because I, I, I could match um, or well, I was maybe heavier than him as well. Uh, <laughs> but you were quick. You want something uh, from the outside of the scouting report. It. They don't think that you're this guy that's going to like, you know, that's going to be hating on you, Boris. Yeah. Yeah. Deceptively okay. quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, pretty much it was pick your poison. And because I had a long okay. reach and long arms, I would just, you know, back up a little bit, give him some space. All I wanted mm-hmm. to do is not him going by me. So as long as he was shooting over me, then it was like, okay, what is percentage going to be, you know? Uh, yeah. But now, nowadays, you know, I feel like his shot is way more reliable and, and you cannot do that anymore. Yeah, he's added so, a lot to his game. I was, I was doing did. analyst work at the time. Um, and I, I remember like saying that Boris is going to, that his ability to guard him is a huge key for them because you spaced him, made him shoot contested, and he was big enough and physical enough around the rim to not give him... Easy looks like dudes like me. I guarded LeBron, but he's just too big. He's gonna finish over you at the rim. He's gonna knock me off of my platform. You did a mm-hmm. great job on him in that series, though. That was it was critical to that. Mm-hmm. 